A company called PD Movie has recently contacted me and asked me if I'm interested in trying out and also work on a review on their wireless photofocus system Live Air 2. Now, to be honest, I have never heard of the company before and I already got a number of product reviews that are already scheduled that I need to finish off before the end of the year. So I was going to say, no, sorry, can't do it. But then I check out their website and just have a look at this Live Air 2 wireless photo focus system and it seems like a very interesting product. So that's why in this video, we are going to have a look at the 3D Movie Live Air 2 wireless photo focus system. Hola, good morning everyone, Rich Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the wireless photo focus system from PD Movie. It's called Live Air 2 and it is a very compact and also very lightweight and also very affordable wireless photo focus system. Okay, so let's start the review by talking about the design and also build quality first. This PD Movie Live Air 2 wireless photo focus system is mainly consists of the controller, which is used to control the photo focus, and the motor, which you are going to mount it onto the camera lens. Both of them is pretty much all made of metal, and build quality is very nice. It feels very solid, very metal, but the weight of these two, the controller and the motor, they are both very lightweight. If you look at the controller from the front, it's pretty much the big wheel here that take up most of the space. And on the side here, we have a micro USB port and on the other side, there's one single button and that's the only button that you can find on the controller. And look at the back, there is a clamp. So if you loosen up a little bit, you can use this clamp to clamp this controller onto either the camera cage for the camera or you can clamp it on the gimbal or you can clamp it on a tripod or any light stand or anything you like. So the design is pretty simple but it works pretty well in real life. And then we have the motor here which also has a pretty simple design. There's a wheel at the front and then this is the place where you mount the connecting rod and pretty much everything is made of metal also feels very solid and also pretty lightweight as well and both the motor and the controller takes rechargeable battery so you insert the battery here and here there are two different type of battery that comes with this live air tube there is the bigger one which is for the motor and then there is the smaller one which is for the controller and actually the bigger battery there are two of them in the box because the battery life for the um, the motor is up to six hours while the battery life for the controller is up to 10 hours so i think it's very nice that pd movie they actually bundle two uh, motor batteries so that you can have the longer overall runtime so you're not limited by the slightly shorter runtime for the motor and in terms of the actual um, runtime so i haven't actually done any testing to see how long does it last but from my experience it seems to last three hours four hours quite easily with still seems like a lot of battery left so yeah the overall battery life seems pretty good consider the battery is pretty small and it also comes with the charger of course a pretty compact charger very nice and it used the micro usb uh, plug here for you to connect the power one thing that i don't really like about the charger is that it has some uh, rubber-ish coating on the outside which make it a little bit tricky sometimes for you to insert the battery into it you kind of have to use a bit of force uh, to push it in because of the rubber coating on the outside and the same when you try to remove the battery is also require a bit of force I would really rather they just use a normal 
plastic um, coating, just the normal plastic for the charger which will make it a lot easier to push the battery in and take it out and then you also have a 15 mil metal rod and also a cold shoe mounting bracket this is for you to mount the motor onto the camera and then you also have some um, usb power cable and also the user manual and things like that so that's pretty much all the important things that you will find inside the box of the pd movie live air 2. To install this Live Air 2 photofocus system is pretty easy. The first thing is you need to put this 15mm metal rod into this cold shoe mount bracket if it's not already inside there. And then you just mount it onto your camera's hot shoe mount or if you're using a camera cage then you just mount it onto your cage cold shoe mount. So the cage I'm using here actually I want to have a talk about this. This is the universal cage from also from PD movie when I was talking to them I was just telling them that I'm probably going to do the review with my Panasonic Lumix S5 but I haven't got a cage yet so they told me like hey we got this universal camera cage do you want to try it out as well so they sent me this cage alongside with the photo focus system and I actually quite impressed by this universal camera cage when I mounted onto the Panasonic Lumix S5, it actually feels very solid. It's only using the hot shoe mount and also a bottom screw. And the result is very good. It feels like very solid and I can't really move it much at all. And it would allow me to attach a lot of accessories. And the best thing is, of course, it is a universal cage so that if I want to use the photo focus on another camera body or anything any accessories on another camera body i can just fit it onto another camera because it should fit most of the normal camera that we are using no matter it's a full frame APS-C or micro four frame so it should still fit so yeah it is actually very nice um go check out their website it's called rick air i think if i remember correctly yeah very nice um, universal cage that works actually quite a bit better than I expected but anyway come back to this uh, photo focus system so uh, just mount this bracket onto the cold shoe mount on the cage okay and then tighten it up just make sure it's nice and secure and now you can just mount the motor onto the connecting rod and then position the wheel onto the wheel on my cine lens so if you are not using a cine lens so your lens doesn't have the geared wheel on it PD Movie also makes a geared ring so that you can use this gear ring and attach it to your normal lens so that you can then attach the motor onto your normal lens and use it just like a cine lens. So just make sure you have the wheels aligned properly and then you tighten up everything. And then with the controller, as I mentioned before, there is a clamp at the back. So you can clamp it onto anything you want. So right now, let me just um, clamp it onto the cage right here. Just tighten it up. And then I just need to insert the battery into the motor and the controller. And that's pretty much most of the setup that I need to do. And the next thing we need to do is do the calibration. And before that, we just need to turn on the power. There's a power switch on the controller, but there is no power switch on the motor. Um, you just need to plug in the battery. So that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this video. So after you turn it on and let them pair it, and there are two ways that you can do the calibration. The first way is you can do a auto calibration and that is 
pretty easy. So you just need to long press the button on the motor and press it and then let go. And then the motor will try to um, turn the wheel to the both extreme end. And then that's it. It just takes a few seconds. And now everything is calibrated correctly with this lens. I can turn to both end very nicely, very quickly. But if you are not using a cine lens, I find that this auto calibration, um, sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. It just really depends on the lens that you are using. If you're using a normal lens that doesn't have a hard stop at the end, then it definitely wouldn't work because there's no way for the follow focus system to figure out when is the start point and end point of your focus ring. But even if your um, lens has a hard stop at the, the one side and the other side, I still find some of the lenses doesn't work quite well with this auto calibration system. It seems to either go over a little bit, sometimes it got stuck, I don't know why. But that's okay because you can do the manual calibration yourself and that is also actually very easy. So what you need to do is you just need to press the button on the motor four times quickly. One, two, three, four. And now you can turn the wheel to uh, one side, the extreme end, and then wait for half a second and then turn it back to the other extreme end and half a second and then move back a little bit and that's it the manual calibration is now done and now you can also control the wheel just like it's done a proper auto calibration so it's a very easy and quick manual calibration process however one thing i noticed is if you remove the battery from for example the motor and take it to uh, charge it and then when you insert it back it seems like it doesn't remember the last calibration information so you have to redo the calibration yourself even though you still have the exactly the same lens attached to it um, fortunately the calibration process is so quick and easy especially after you have done it a few times it's like five seconds and you can do it uh, but i think it'll be good if it at least remember the last calibration data so i if i don't change lens i don't have to go through that five second step again and again and again and again and again so in terms of the actual operation of this follow focus system it is excellent i would say it is excellent because the response is very smooth no matter i'm turning it slowly or turn it quickly it's very smooth and also I don't feel any lag at all when I'm turning the wheel it pretty much I turn it and it will turn immediately if there's any lag it's so small that I don't think it matter to anyone and also the motor itself is very quiet it's extremely quiet because like even now I am recording in my room and it's a very quiet room when I turn the wheel I don't hear the motor at all it's so quiet and overall the whole system works so smoothly that I almost feel like I'm just controlling a normal non-wireless follow focus system because everything just runs so smoothly and also the response is so instant and also another thing is um, before I start to use it I was a bit worried about because the rod is only using a single hot shoe uh, or cold shoe connection to it so I was thinking maybe is it stable enough when I'm trying to you know um, move the motor would there be quite a bit of um, movement or vibration or prey with the connecting rod or the motor but it seems like it's not actually a problem if you look at it everything is very very solid there's no movement at all I have to say the other photo focus system that I use there is a little bit more movement uh, compared to this one so yeah that is 
very solid and definitely very impressive. Now, while I'm pretty impressed by the actual operation of this photo focus system, there are a few things though I want to talk about and things that I think probably PD Movie can improve in the future. First thing is, I mentioned before, for some reason, there's only a power switch on the controller, but there's nothing on the motor. So when I finish filming, I will remove the battery from the motor and there's no um, switch or button or latch or anything that allow me to pop the battery out from the motor. And to be honest, the first time that when I try to remove the battery from the motor, it took me more than 10 minutes before I figured out how to do it because yeah, I tried to find a switch or button or something like that. It's not there. And then I tried to like, oh, maybe just push it in and it will, you know, um, stick out like uh, a lot of the battery is like that. No, it doesn't. And, <laughs> and then I figured out actually what you need to do is that you need to push the battery to one side and now you can slide the battery out. So um, yeah, once I figured out it's not too hard, but I think it'll be easier if PD Movie they just put some uh, a switch or button or something that would allow people to easily uh, remove the battery when they finish, or even better, just put a power button there so that I can just turn off the whole thing completely without draining any battery. So yeah, either way it would be good. And another thing I don't really like is there's only one button on both the controller and the motor. So basically you use that single button to do everything. You use it to turn on or turn off the controller. You use it to connect the controller to the motor. You use it to change all the settings. You use it to trigger the calibration. And because there's only one button, so you have to rely on different way to press the button. Uh, so you have different kind of sequence. For example, I mentioned before, if you want to uh, set it to the manual calibration mode, you have to press it four times. Or for example, if you want to do uh, reverse the motor direction, then you press it seven times. And then some other are just relying on the short press and the long press, different kind of sequence combination, then you do different things. So it's not intuitive at all. And I don't think anyone can remember all those different uh, button sequence. Now, to be fair, PD Movie, they did print out like a little cheat sheet thing on to the back of the motor. So you might be able to see it here. But it is so small, even if you have perfect eyesight, it will probably struggle to actually read what is exactly printed there. And like me, I don't have perfect eyesight. So it is a challenge. And to be honest, I can't really read what is printed there. So yeah, I think <laughs> it would be better if PD Movie just add more than one button onto the either the controller or the motor or think of some way just um I, there's something i found like a lot of the gadgets that design these days maybe they just try to simplify the user interface by putting less button there but sometimes when you put two few buttons or two few controls there it actually complicates things because you have to rely on the same thing so you have to rely on different kind of way to press it or different sequence that actually make the user interface not as intuitive as if you just add one or two more buttons. So yeah, this is another little complaint I have about this 3D Movie Live Air 2 system. Overall, I think there are definitely a few things that 3D Movie can improve with this Live Air 2 wireless photo focus system. And I mentioned the biggest one that I think they should improve just before. But fortunately, most of those complaints are relatively minor thing and most of them are just about the whole um, user experience and some of the thing that can polish to improve the operation. The actual photo focus system itself actually is very nice, very smooth, very quiet, and there's almost no lag at all so everything is 
very solid and I think that's probably the most important thing for a wireless photo focus system or any kind of photo focus system and what I really like about this Live Air 2 is just how compact and how lightweight it is both the controller and the motor they are both very small and it's not heavy at all even though I mount both of them with the connecting rod it doesn't add too much weight to the camera so that would be great if you are planning to mount your camera on a gimbal or do any kind of handheld run and gun style shooting so that really is very good because you are not adding too much weight to your camera